Um, so how, how much time do we have? 8.45. Wow, long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll tell you, you know, first a little bit, you know, David you know, introduced the firm, but um, I started a firm named 5WPR in uh, January of 2003 um, in a room about half the size of this. Today we're about 100 people. Um, we, you know, we were the fast growing PR firm in the country for three years in a row. We were on the Inc. 500 list of uh, fast growing companies in America. When I started the agency, our first clients were Bad Boy Worldwide. Um, we've grown, you know, today to be very diverse. So through the years, our clients have included Microsoft, Coca-Cola, XM Radio, um, two of the 400 richest people in the world, foreign governments from Morocco to Ukraine to Israel to a slew of others. Um, we're the only top 50 firm in America owned by anybody under the age of 45. Why did that matter? I'll talk about it a lot, but I think that um, PR is a business for young minds and for young people. Um, and I'll define young people in many different ways. You know, for me, Warren Buffett is young. For me, Donald Trump is young. Okay? Um, you know, Donald, if Sarah Jessica Parker walked in here, this is, you know, Sarah Par Jessica Parker walked into an NYU undergrad class, and all the 18-year-old girls would want to be here about her shoes, right? They don't want to hear about her outfits. Warren Buffett talks about stocks, and everybody in the hedge fund industry jumps up and down no matter who, how old they are, right? Yeah. In our business, um, in the PR business, it is something that, you know, we never know what this week will look like. We never know what this day will look like. Um, I can't tell you, you know, I had a huge client crisis today at 3 o'clock. I'm sitting in a meeting, a reporter from a major publication you've heard of calls me and sends an email. I'm on deadline for 4.30. And, you know, you don't respond, you're going to get no response to the story, and we're going to get none of those interests there. And that happens every single day of my business. Um, you know, so I think that um, PR is something for um, people who want to move very quickly, people who know about pressure. Um, you know, if you're not familiar, um, CareerCast wrote a, a CareerCast does an annual survey of the most stressful jobs in America. Anybody see it? PR ranked at the second most stressful job in America this year. Um, was the first most stressful last year, and in 2010 it was the third most stressful. Um, and I think that that's absolutely accurate. Anybody who works in PR, it's a stressful job nonstop. So I'll start with um, a definition of what I think great public relations is. So great public relations is something which helps make the impersonal person, <coughs> bridges divides, it creates excitement and builds equity for businesses, personalities, politicians, and others, manages crisis and catastrophe, it's telling stories, it's having conversations, and PR is needed by anybody or any, any business and anybody with a pulse. Um, I think that PR today is a mixture of journalism, psychology, and lawyers, lawyering. Um, PR is something that every single person is involved with today. PR for me is defined by your dress, your manner of talking, your, you know, people think that there's privacy online, I have no view. There's no privacy online. You don't like it, tough luck. Um, you know, if you're going to tweet about you're going to get high with your friends, <laughs> your employer's going to see it. You know, fair, you know, I'm 37, so I grew up, you know, watching Ferris Bueller, right? So there's nobody my age who has <laughs> seen Ferris Bueller, right? <laughs> Such a thing today could never, ever exist. Because before the kid was so, who hasn't seen Ferris Bueller? I don't care how old you are, you got to see it. But if you haven't seen it, the kid would never make it out of his house before he's caught, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on something else. Um, Howard, how are you? Thank you. Sorry. How are you? Um, Howard Cohen, a mutual friend. Yes, yeah, Howard. This is uh, Howard Cohen who introduced, who made the introduction. Uh, of Ron. So, you know, when you talk about, you know, what, um, what PR looks like today, it's something where, you know, again, so Ferris Bueller it would never happen today because the kid would never make it out of his door. Um, <laughs> So PR is something which allows you to really innovate your brand. It allows you to, I'm sorry, going back to where I was. Every person is a brand. So what does it mean? It means what you're tweeting about, what you're writing about, who you are, how you're positioning yourself, how you're gossiping about yourself, how you're selling yourself. Those are all parts of the brands of PR for me today. Um, and I think that, you know, everybody today is in PR, whether you're, you know, writing your paper and you're, you know, you're <coughs> pretending to be taking notes studiously when you're sitting in a class and you're really doodling. <laughs> To me, that's PR. You know, you remember the um, the great Vegas commercial, which talks about you know what you do in Vegas, if, um, you know what's, what what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. Does anybody remember that commercial with the woman who is um, 
flirting with the cab driver, flirting with the limo. There's a woman who's flirting with the limo driver, a ton, very sexy. And um, flirting with him and talking with him and very, you know, cleavage out and all the rest. <laughs> and then, um, you know, she, uh, he says to her, you know, we're approaching the airport. So she touches the button for the screen to go up. And then the next thing you know, there's a woman very conservatively dressed in glasses with a British accent. Just to thank you so much, sir, for the ride. <laughs> to me, a lot of that is PR. You know, um, every woman, when she wakes up, is gorgeous, right? <coughs> she puts on makeup. But she does her hair. It's the same woman, right? But that's PR. Um, so in terms of, you know, what the market and how you innovate it today and what it looks like, you know, I think people talk a lot about what the media world looks like today. Um, and I think the media world is more fragmented than it's ever been before, and I think that that will only continue. I think that um, people who talk about digital media today, it's a lot like a transistor radio when it started compared to, you know, where we are today. So while we're, you know, watching Fox News, there's two, there's two screens going on at the bottom. And you're playing with your iPad, and you have apps going on. You have a million other things. There's such a confusion in the market, and even with all this confusion, how do we know that you know Bin Laden was caught where he was caught? We don't know from Fox, right? We don't know from CNN. We don't know from the Times. We know from a random guy who was, if you read the story, was on vacation from his family in the, in the uh, mountains of Pakistan, and was taking a break from his family. He was a programmer, and the guy said, "Wow, I can't believe what's going on. It looks like something crazy is going on over here." And sure enough, that was, you know, American forces coming to capture Bin Laden. You look at, you know, the last minutes of Gaddafi. That wasn't CBS. That wasn't NBC. That wasn't ABC. That was the guys who killed him. Yeah. Right? So the guys who killed him were five feet away from him, ten feet away from him, twenty feet away from him. You know, shooting on a handheld. So the world today, in terms of, you know, media brands, is much different than it's ever been before. And I think that that's a risk. And it's